So after Pastor Jen let me know last night that she had a fever, and we said we, and I said, well, actually, I've got a sore throat. We'll see what happens when we get up in the morning. Uh, when I woke up, most of my sore throat was gone, um, and actually, it wasn't even that bad, but I was worried. You know, you start to feel it, and you're like, when I get up in the morning, is it going to be all right? And mine was all right, and, and Pastor Jen let me know, yeah, I still have a fever. And I'm thinking that really what she wanted to do was still come, but I said, no, it's all right. Take rest. Do what we tell people to do is when you're not feeling well, stay home. And she did. And then I had to decide. She sent me the sermon she was going to preach, and I was like, what do I do? And I've done it before. I've been given sermons to read, and I have read them, and I prayed about it, and I said, there was a lot of thought and effort that went into what Pastor Jen created. And so I'm just going to be reading her sermon, and I wanted to let you know that. Uh, we work together, and anything she preaches, I agree with 100%. I mean, we are on the same page. We talk, we pray together, we plan the worship together. So it makes it relatively easy because we know what each of us were, were, what was next and what we were going to preach about. So with that, uh, let us pray. Gracious God, use me to share the words that were offered up by your daughter, Jen. Let them flow through me, cracked as a vessel as I am, that these words might provide wisdom and encouragement for us in our lives. We pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Have you ever been in the belly of a whale? I'm thinking not. Now, they do, have, they do have accounts from the 1800s of a man who supposedly was swallowed by this big, great fish. And then a week later, they found the man who, and he actually was able to survive for a week in this large fish. Unfortunately, there's no real documentation of this story. Uh, so maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But, my guess is many of you have never been in the belly of a whale. Jonah chapter 1 ends in verse 17 with Jonas, Jonah in the belly of a large fish. It says, But the Lord provided a large fish to swallow, swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Have you ever been in the belly of a whale? Well, maybe not the whale that we're thinking of, a physical whale. But I think we've been in that belly before. Running from God, we find ourselves in the dark, feeling alone, maybe a little wet. Maybe it smells bad. Maybe there's no sign of light anywhere. You've been there, right? Been trying to do your own thing instead of following God? Hmm. Or even just that the world is heavy. Thing after thing is going on, and it's laying upon you, and it's feeling like it's going to crush you. And you see no light because all that's piling on top of you, you look up and you can't see anything but darkness. It seems hard or almost impossible to find God sometimes in the midst of our troubles. Like the darkness will never end. I mean, how exactly does one get out of the belly of a whale? The answer is going to seem obvious and shows up right up in the very next verse as we start Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Jonah prayed. He was running, he was running. Remember, everybody last week on the ship, all the, all the pagans were even praying. He was not praying. They had to, to tell him, pray to your God. Well, now that he's in the belly of the whale, he realizes what he needs to do. He is a faithful prophet. So at this moment, he realizes, yeah, that's right. When you got situations like this, you go to God. You spend time in prayer. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Jonah prayed. 
When we are lost, when we can't find the hope, when we have run from God and are found ourselves in the darkness, that is the moment to stop and to pray. To stop and pray. Now remember, the world, Satan is going to try to get you to run around frantically, to just look around and say, it's so dark, there's nothing I can do, and, and just be trying to, to run around and to fix things or find ways to get out. But really, really, stop and pray is what we should do when we're confronted with these situations. When we're in the belly of the whale, just stop. Stop crying out. Stop running around figuring, is there a way to get out? And just stop for a moment and pray. Connect with the creator, the eternal. Lift up that prayer. And Jonah realized it. That's what he did. Jonah's psalm starts out in verse 2, 2, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried out, and you heard my voice. In our Tuesday night Bible study, we were discussing Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 7 through 10 says this. Go ahead and put that up on the screen. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many works. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Mm. Do we do that? Do we go in those times and ask for our daily bread? Just what we need in that moment. We're not asking to win the lottery. We're not asking for everything to, to be taken away. Just what we need for this moment for our day. Do we turn to God and ask for that? How often do we forget that our first response in sorrow and suffering or in joy and celebration should be to pray? The prayer of the faithful is heard. Jonah, in fact, was a faithful person, albeit at times misguided, which is what landed him in the belly of a big fish. But Jonah was still a prophet. Jonah was a prophet Yet he still ran from God when things got tough and a bit scary. Jonah isolated himself and tried to hide from God. But at the point he find him, found himself with a whale-sized problem and realized what he was doing, he cried out to God in desperation, and God heard his prayer. Jonah wanted to return to the light and to be freed from the confines of the darkness. Isn't that what we all want? Isn't that what we all want? To be freed from the confines of darkness. The belly of the whale is not a glamorous place. Not that I've actually been in a whale's belly, but definitely, definitely, I have been in that place where things stink, where it's dark, where it feels hopeless. I've been in that belly, and I'm guessing you have too. Jonah 2.3 goes on to say, You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. Jonah made a decision, and there were consequences to his decisions. He ran from God, and so to calm the storm, he had to be tossed into the water. The belly of the whale seems like both a consequence and being spared. Jonah probably would not have survived had he remained in the water and exposed to the elements rather than spending three days in the belly of a whale. Three days that God both gave refuge and allowed Jonah to suffer a bit, not knowing how things were going to turn out. Jonah needed a few days to remember to whom he belongs and to whom 
he serves. Trials in our lives have a way of doing that. You know, in the book of James, when we are reminded that sometimes we need the trials to grow closer to God. Like it says in 1 Peter, Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his grace, mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. Who are you being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time? In this you rejoice, even now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through, though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor where Jesus is revealed. Or even as we're reminded in Psalm 23, there will be times of darkness in all of our lives. Some of the results of the decisions we make. And some, some because we live in a fallen, broken world. But when it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or the, sh the, the shadow of darkness, it is quickly followed by the reminder which says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Because we need a God who will put us on the right path and teach us the hard lessons so that we can be closer to God and to learn to follow God's will and not our own will. But even in Psalm 23, what seems like the bleakest moment in the valley of the shadow of death, we are reminded that God never abandons us because there cannot be a shadow if there is no light. Jonah continues in verse 4. Then I said, I've driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. At the roots of the mountains, I went down to the land whose bars closed op upon me forever. This, this is real life. What Jonah is describing in this psalm, the depths of despair, the water closing in and deep darkness surrounding us, I don't think any of us have to think hard to remember this kind of feeling. Maybe we're feeling it right now. Something in our lives might be bringing darkness that we cannot see out of. We might even feel trapped and confined. Before we know Jesus... We are there, whether we know it or not. Before we know Jesus, we are in that darkness. We are only in darkness and cannot see the true light. We have a Savior who knows what it is like to be in the darkness, so he can relate to us and us to him. Look at the similarities in this scripture to what Jesus went through in suffering and death. Think about verse 4-4. Four, four. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight. How shall I look again upon your holy temple? Then, as the scripture continues in verse 5, weeds wrap around his head. Sounds familiar. Almost like a crown of thorns. The deep surrounded me. Pain, loneliness, death. And verse 6, at the roots of the mountains, I went down into the land, death on Calvary, and burial in a tomb. The story of, G of Jonah gives us another image of the resurrection, one that Jesus even uses in his teaching in the book of Matthew. We have to die to ourselves with Jesus before we can truly rise up. Sometimes, even after we are believers, we have to be in the belly of the whale to draw closer to God and to remember whose we are. So this story speaks to two group of people. One, people who do not yet know Jesus and are living in darkness. They are living for the world. And then two, people who are like Jonah. They already believe. They are believers. Who have fallen off the path and are not following God's will. 
But praise God for resurrection. God hears our prayers. Look at Jonah's praise. Yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. As my life was ebbing away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Jonah is celebrating that his prayers have been answered, that he will be brought out of the darkness, freed from the belly of the whale. Jonah will be redeemed and restored. He has been through the darkness and knows redemption and reconciliation with God. This is where things get really exciting. Matthew 12 38 through 41, talks about just this moment when Jesus himself compares Jonah's experience to Jesus' own resurrection to doubting Pharisees and Sadducees. In Matthew 12, starting at verse 38, it says, Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Mm. Have you ever noticed those parallels before? The men, oh, go ahead, keep on going. <laughs> the men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with the generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now something greater than Jonah is here. Hmm. Amen. Let's give praise for that, that this is not some story from the Old Testament that was just a prophet being restored and redeemed, but this is a story that points ahead to Jesus and what Jesus was going to do. That God is a God of love and grace, of redemption and restoration throughout time. Often people say, I don't like the Old Testament. That's the mean, vengeful God. But in the New Testament, that's the hope-filled, loving. No, that is not correct. God is the same from the very beginning to the end. And so in this story, we already see a sign of restoration, of renewal, of resurrection for Jonah. And it is pointing to what is to come with Jesus. Indeed, something greater is here. We don't have to remain in the darkness because Jesus will and can set us free. All we need to do is believe and get to know Jesus personally. So I have a question for you. Who are you? Are you a chapter one Ninevite who is trapped in the darkness of the world? Are you Jonah, who knows the hope of the Lord but is hiding from God because things got hard? Because the truth of these travesties is in what Jonah says in verse 8. Those who worship vain idols forsake their true loyalty. Here is the hard part, the part where we examine ourselves. Do you really know Jesus? Just because you're here does not mean you do. I know that I sat in a sanctuary, and I did not believe. I was actually a finance chair at a Methodist church and did not believe. So just because you're here does not mean you do. Just because you come to church every Sunday morning for the last 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years still does not mean that you have a relationship with Jesus. That's the part that we need to make sure that we all have. That's the point of cultivating that and and being a community body of Christ. We cannot do this on alone. We need to be together, helping each other, praying for each other. It's more than just coming to worship and then leaving and going out the doors. good news is, the good news is that God has provided us a way that we eventually, if we spend time in the belly, we are able to once again come out into the light. 
If you don't know Jesus, now is the time to free yourself from the belly of the whale. If you do know Jesus, are you walking with Jesus? Who are you serving? Remember, you can't serve two masters. Are you worshiping Jesus? Or are you worshiping the world? Is there something else that you are allowing to draw your attention away from Jesus and from God? Are you afraid, like Jonah, hoping God will call you to an easier path? The good news is that God provided Jonah a way. God will provide you a way. Jonah cries out to God in gratitude in verse 9. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you that I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. After three days in the darkness of the belly of the whale, Jonah was freed. It was not a pretty way to freedom. I can't imagine how hard it was to be in that darkness. It was probably grimy and disgusting, frightening and lonely. And remember, we know how the story ends. Jonah does not. When he is in the whale, he does not know what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure most of us, when we, if we got sucked into a belly of a whale or a big fish, we'd think we're doomed. We would not expect that in three days we'd still be alive and that we will be sent out that we will be sent back into the light. Jonah does not know that. How often are we unfaithful, untrue, and we don't believe that we will see the light. If we know Jesus, we will see the light. It will be given to us. And in those times of darkness, just as Jonah did, we go to prayer, and eventually that light will come back in. As Jesus pointed out, the whale-sized tale of grace is more than the fact that Jonah sat in a whale for three days and came out alive. The whale-sized tale of grace is that God provided a way to salvation, that God gave us Jesus who did not turn away from God, but did suffer, died, descended to the dead, and after three days rose again to defeat death so that we might be freed so that we do not have to remain in the belly of a whale. We do not have to sit in sin and darkness and filth. Even if our choices put us in the place of darkness, we can still be freed. Nobody here has done anything that would not allow them to receive salvation from God and to be freed from the darkness. If you ask, it will be given. But as verse 10 says, Then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out onto dry land. The whale was both the descent into darkness that Jonah needed to realize that Jonah needs God and must rely on God, and the mechanism to which Jonah was kept safe from other harm and given freedom in the name of God. So, today, accept your freedom today in the name of Jesus. If this morning you are in that belly, we'll have time for you to come forward, to be at the altar, or you can sit in your seats, just to come to God and to say, Lord, yes, I want that light. To admit that you have not been receiving that light, accepting that light, praying for that light to come back in. Anybody, wherever we're at in our path, we can receive that this very day. Remember, Jonah was a prophet, a wise and godly man, and still fell short, and we all fall short, but we can all be restored and renewed. Occasionally, we all do need a time out in the belly of the whale, to be reminded that all that we have, all that we need comes from God, and for us to be reminded of that, to reclaim that, and then to give praise to God for the gift that has been given for us and for all. What a glorious whale-sized tale of grace, and we'll be continuing with it next week. Will you pray with me? Oh, Lord, the words gracious 
God, we may say, and not really understand the depth of the meaning of love and that is within that phrase. Lord, Lord, help us this very day to realize that if we are in darkness, you will provide light. Lord, help us to be those that give words of assurance to others who have fallen short, that they too can be restored, that the light can shine upon them. Lord, help us to create a community where when we fall short, we remind each other that we all fall short, that Jonah falls short, that we have the ability, though, to still turn to you and to enter back into that glorious light of love and grace that is extended to us time and time again. Lord, let this church be a place that offers the grace to the community around us. Let them know that they can come and they can receive your love and grace, that they, when they walk through these doors, that you will meet them here and that they can receive a great, glorious, whale-sized gift given to us by your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.